the brickwork is beautiful. It does say keep out on that sign, but I doubt. Okay. Let's just take a quick look. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we are in Carlow, just outside Carlow town and this is Dunlechny old graveyard. We have ruins of a church, we have a little wooded area and for all you old uh, subscribers on this channel and I don't mean by age, um, so if you've been subscribed to the channel for a number of years you might just recognise this place. Um, this is the place where I found the oldest headstone um, so we are going to try and find that again today if I can remember where it is and a beautiful little wooded area so come on let's take a look and see what we can find today so I think I'm going to walk up along here first behind us there are the ruins of not one but two churches and um, we have the the Baganals and the New Towns, and they are actually buried in there. There's also a kind of a little part up here where we're going to go to first. Um, that used to be separated from the graveyard, but when the graveyard had to be extended, they've kind of added that piece in to this graveyard. So the Bagnalls were wealthy landowners. There's actually a town here in Carlow, Bagnalls Town, that's named after them and the new towns as well. It's quite prominent families, landowners. Um, they're buried in there as well. Um, look at this. They are buried there as well. And they were also a uh, family kind of um, landowners and also a, a village new town named after them as well now this is so beautiful look at this so just here we have thomas bolton 1902 there Let's see if we can get around and up. So this may be the little area that was, um, I think, formerly outside the, the graveyard. So more of a, a private uh, little graveyard. And then, as I said, when they um, had to extend the graveyard, you know, it became one unfortunately look at these as beautiful as it is that ivy will eventually pull those stones down ah this is it look at this almost like um a creepy cemetery where you know you're going to find vampires and ghouls and all sorts of strange creatures maybe even a leprechaun who knows so i think we have one two three four uh, crosses here this is walter hope 1893 i believe Actually, it's Hoare is the surname, H-O-R-E. And this is another Walter Hoare, 1902. Um, he was 47 when he died. Those are beautiful. You can see the Celtic designs there on them, the Celtic knots. But just look at this place. It is wonderful. Look at this one.
until the day break and the shadow and the shadows flee away. Just wrote there. In loving remembrance of Philip Jocelyn Newtown. So I'm presuming this is the the little private burial area then. That's Newtown that we were talking about. Here also is Newtown. 1845 on this one. Philip Jocelyn Newtown. 1830. I think that one may have lost the cross on top. And this is Sir Charles Stanley Osborne. July the 16th, 1879, aged 54. Now it's also said that the Knights Templars were close to this area. There is a seemingly a monastic site close by as well. But just look at this. Now I know it is overgrown and becoming forgotten, but my God, is it gorgeous. Wow. Christopher, eldest and beloved son of Robert and Marion Bradley. He died in 1911, aged 50, also their daughter Elizabeth. She was only 26 when she passed in 1889. Their son William, he was 44 in 1916, and the above Robert, 83, 1920. His wife Marion is there as well. In memory of Christopher Riley, the faithful and attached servant to Philip J. Newton, Esquire and his family for more than 50 years. He died on the 9th of March, 1879, aged 75. That's beautiful. Christopher then was the servant of Philip J. Newton, or Newton, Esquire. And uh, they have recalled that there on the inscription, which is fantastic. And I actually love finding those inscriptions where it explains who they were and you know what they worked at so we will be making our way down towards the ruins how beautiful is that area So the cemetery does go on up the hill up there. And you will notice that some of the graves or the headstones have numbers. This one is 243. So I'm presuming there is a map or records associated with this graveyard. Large Celtic cross. To the beloved wife of James Byrne, Bangalstown, there's the name of the town we discussed as well. Can't really make out a date. And then it says underneath. Lie Patrick and Peter Byrne. Also, I can't make out the date. It looks like 1930. 
it does actually feel like we are very much isolated in this wooded area. Off in the distance I can hear the crows calling or squawking or right we'll try to get up this hill without falling. Ooh. Look at that. It's like a blanket of ivy over the top of it. Look at that, off in the distance. Looks like someone is I don't know, making a tree house, a little den. I'll we'll have to have a, a closer look. Is it for bikes or something? Do you know, like a track? Seems to go off there. Like little ramps and things, just up on that little hill. A bit strange. Like a, a bike track going through the cemetery. Take a look at that, see what was going on. The cemetery is just here. Anyway, now we know. John Joseph Murta, it looks like. Bangles Town, and this one. Right, I want to try and get down. Along here might be easier than going back down that slope. So you can hear the birds, as I said, and the crows are off in the distance there. I've spotted this. It's a nice memorial. Erected by Mary McCrane or McLean, I think it is. Loving memory of her husband, John, yeah, McLean it is. Who died December 1918, aged 48. In a very beautiful little place there. Right, so that's 
the ruins of one church. One church is obviously older than the other. Now, if my memory serves me right, I think that 1600 stone was along here. And my biggest fear is it's gone. I really hope not. Some of them are, are leaning, a lot of them full of lichen. Some iron memorials just here. Oh my gosh. I really hope it's it's not gone. It was a small little headstone. And I'm just not seeing it. Sorry, my nose is running with the cold. I feel like in the video. I wonder is this it? Nothing on that one. Oh dear. Right. Right, I'm correct. I stopped and looked at this. And over here, I just noticed the name Brian. B-R-Y-A-N. Now, unfortunately, this one was very hard to read. It says, here lieth the body of, that could be Thomas, actually. See the little S just there? So it may, I think that is Thomas. Thomas, B-R-Y-A-N, Brian, who departed November. be seventh there and just there very hard to read now is 16 there's a two and I believe it was 1622 so we have lost even more of this grave and eventually you can see it I'm not even going to to touch it that is going to crumble and you're going to lose it but you see the 1616 the two there and I believe it was 1622 or maybe 1627. But I think at the time I was able to trace the numbers and it was 16 to 22 there. Isn't that amazing? So that is the oldest headstone I have found. We have found older graves, but that's the oldest headstone. Um, and unfortunately that is going to be lost, but uh, I'm glad I've been able to, to get back and to, to video it. So let's wander inside the ruins of this church. Now we do have a plaque up there as well. And we have two graves here for the Doyle families. And behind that, that plaque actually is a Doyle as well. That is, I believe, 1700s.
Underneath lies the remains of Marlon Doyle, 1778, and her son, Charles. Doyle is there as well, 1785. Now that one would have had lovely detailing, so I'm thinking it's probably the, the crucifixion scene. Rooster, pliers, the ladder, the cross, the spear. Just barely making those things out there. That's the ladder, the pliers, the rooster is just there. Right, so we have some stones in here. This beautiful obelisk is erected by Charles McGrath in affectionate remembers, sorry, in re affectionate remembrance of his beloved parents. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. And then in here, look at these. These are fantastic runes. Just to our right, here lieth the body of James Byrne, who died the 30th of July, 1759, age 78. Lord have mercy on him. Amen. And then just below that it says also Mary Byrne. Wow, look at that. So this one has huge writing, it's a huge stone. Here lieth the body of James Blackney, who departed this life the 20, 21st of May, 1742, age 60. Also the body of Mary Blackney, wife of Walter Blackney. She departed this life the 24th of June, 1754, age 32. These are Blackney's. On this one as well. And then this one. This monument was erected by the Reverend Michael Pendergrass, P Pendergrast, parish priest of Dunlechney, AD 1810, in memory of his uncle, the Reverend Michael Brophy, who departed this life February. 1798, age 63. Also in memory of his grand uncle, the Reverend Malachy Brophy, doctor of Sorbonne, it looks like, and parish priest of Dunlickney, 1758. And there you are, that 302. Definitely they have... Um, made some sort of effort in recording the stones. Here lieth the body of Margaret Brown, who deceased 17th of June, 17, 1717 there, look at that. Twenty-first year of her age, may she rest in peace. Beautiful writing there for Margaret Brown. Only twenty-one when she passed. In seventeen seventeen, she has a little crown of moss on her little stone there. So this section is for the McGraths, the two little crosses. This one in here has caught my eye because it says solicitor. Here lie the remains of John Joseph Tierney Esquire, solicitor. So sometimes Esquire does actually mean solicitor. Sometimes it means they were a wealthy land owning family. Look at this one. Beautiful. 
1804. But unfortunately, even with the torch, we cannot read it. And just behind the obelisk, we have what is known as a tabletop tomb. This one has much shorter legs than what we're used to seeing. So that brings us out of this rune and we're going to take a little look. Hear those crows. Noisy. Now look at this, this would have been a fine church. Now, when I put up the writing, um, you can pause it to read it in any of the videos that I put up, the little bit of extra information that we might come across. So if there is any time that you see writing on a video, um, if you can just pause the video to take a read of it, rather than, you know, me putting up writing across the screen for a very long time. Now, I believe this is the private burial area of the Bagginals. Torch's not going to be much use to us, but you do see Bagginal there. There's a catch in Newtown as well. I wonder, did the Bagginals and the Newtowns, you know, marry at some stage? Don't see a date. I do see in the year of our Lord, but the, the moss, which we might be able to remove easy enough. Looks like the first day of May in the year of our Lord. Doesn't give us a, an actual year. This one, this private area, joins onto the other church room, which obviously is, I'd imagine, early 1900s. The brickwork is beautiful. It does say keep out on that sign, but I doubt. Okay. Let's just take a quick look. Oh Lord, it would have been a huge church. This would have possibly been the bell tower, although it's quite um, low, if you know what I mean. Usually they're quite tall, the, the towers, but I'm presuming it is. It's usually where you walk into the entrance. Wow. In memory of Henry Etta Marie Newtown, the beloved wife of Philip Jocelyn, who died at Dunleck, Dunleck House, it looks like, December 1849, age just 30. There's another one there. Don't know whether you'll see it. It's for Walter Newtown Esquire. Looks like 1862 wrote there. But we're not even going to attempt walking here because... Let me see. A hole there, right there. Now, there's two possibilities. One is it's an underground crypt. Whoa, or another is. 
it's like underground plumbing like a, a boiler place or something that is a bit whoa jeepers what is that lads Let's see if I can show you. What is that? Like there's a wall. I can assume he is in a little bit. Just there. There's a wall. See that little piece of muck just under that? is a wall so what the heck is that that being underground crypt that is fascinating what is it what is it right Answers down in the comments. There's no way of me getting down to look at that because there's no like steps. So if I get down, I'm not getting back up, am I? I don't know what that is. So strange. Very, very dangerous. If you didn't see that, you'd be down about four foot. But it seems to go like the hole is there but it seems to go in under so where i'm walking basically maybe i should get out okay so the whole ground caves in there's that plaque on the wall for walter newton i keep saying new town but it's newton so apologies for that and then this is also Newton, Henrietta, right, oh jeepers, I don't have to get myself into oh, the worst positions. Look at the ivy, it is completely reclaimed the old church here. Now, let's get out. up the gate the way we found it so that's it there all closed up we have it been a beautiful arched entrance and here's the sun I think that's a crypt, you know that? Because we've found boiler kind of houses in, or not houses, but we've seen it underground and it's not like that. It's more of an open square. That's small. But this is the, the graveyard. You can see it's, it's huge. All right, crows, what's wrong? Noisy. This is a lovely one as well. This one is actually all in Irish. Um, we have two angels on either side of this beautiful cross. Looks like Porrick McCarthy is the name on it. Back of the the ruins, absolutely gorgeous. Look at the stonework. Like, how is that even staying up? You just would wonder. And the whole graveyard is full of conifers or yew trees. Um, 
yew tree's been a very popular tree to grow in graveyards. One, the roots don't extend too far and seemingly cattle don't like them. So I think I will leave it there guys. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Please, please, please. It's so important to the channel. Um, I've had to come back into this little wooded area just to take a final look at the place while the sun is coming through. Um, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, as I said, subscribe to the channel. But for now, guys, take care. God bless. And I will talk to you all again soon.